Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Truck Roll. Alright, as you can see we're having a rain day today. Um, actually if you watched uh, the last video you saw a little bit of that storm last night. It's been going for about 14 hours right now and I just actually looked at my rain gauge. We've had 5 inches of rain in the last 14 hours. Yep, 5 inches of rain. That's insane. First thing I thought when I saw that is, uh oh, what's a swimming pool look like? Yeah, and then I got out here and looked, but the swimming pool was actually overflowing. So I'm actually gonna have to pump some water out of here. Uh, because like I said, this storm isn't even done yet. It's supposed to rain probably for another several hours, and then we're supposed to get maybe more tonight, and maybe more tomorrow. So yeah, I definitely gotta uh, drain a little bit of water out of this pool. We're gonna have to do that right now. So I gotta be really careful when I try and change the level of the pool. I've actually kind of made some dumb mistakes in the past. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of time, for instance, if I want to increase the amount of uh, water in the pool because a garden hose, you know, it takes like an hour just to change the pool level, uh, you know, like one inch. And, you know, with all the evaporation we get here in the summer, um, you know, I'm having to do that every couple of weeks where I have to put more water in the pool. Um, but then I go the other extreme. I'll put, you know, I'll get going on something. I'll lose track of the time and then all of a sudden I'll come out and the water's like overflowing. And so then I gotta drain it. Well, the draining of the pool is actually happens a lot faster because the pump can move a lot of water. In fact, it's got about the volume of a fire hose that it can move. So there've been times where, you know, after overfilling the pool, I had to drain a little bit and then I walk away and lose track of the time and come back and I've drained half the water out of the pool. So this time I'm gonna, when I do this, I'm just gonna stay out here and watch it because it should only take it a couple minutes to to drop the uh, inch or so that I want it in the water level. Yeah, so this is the drain hose right here. And so you can see that's about the diameter of a fire hose. So you get that thing going, you can pump the water out of here really fast. So what I do is I just kind of stretch it out into the front yard a little bit because I don't want to drain uh, you know, chlorinated pool water into the backyard and kill my lawn or anything. But if we do it here, it'll just kind of go down the driveway and uh, get washed away in the storm drains. Yeah, so that thing pumps the water really fast. So I'm gonna go in the backyard and we're just gonna watch what happens in the pool so that we don't over drain this again. I don't wanna do that again. That's expensive. All right, we uh, completed our mission here. We've dropped the water level in the pool by about an inch. It's right now about a half inch below the uh, flood level. I suspect I'll probably have to drain it again at some point, but uh, you know, over the next couple days. But right now it's at a good point, and if for some reason the we uh, weather forecasters get it wrong and it doesn't rain over the next two days, then I got it at a good level, and, it and it'll be a while before I have to fill it again. That's the positive thing about rain around here is it's free water. So, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to fill up the pool every once in a while, and if you can get the if you can get Mother Nature to just drop uh, five inches of rain in your pool for free, why not, right? So let's move on to the next thing. Now I got a couple more things on the schedule for today. First off, my lawnmower is supposed to arrive today. I'm hoping the fact that it's raining doesn't uh, slow them do down at all, but uh, hopefully that will be here uh, two days later. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna be mowing today, but it'll at least be nice to have it here. Then I can see, start uh, at least learning how to use it. And the other thing um, I discovered yesterday, I knew, I, I knew this was coming, but I discovered yesterday that the hard drive where I do all my editing and park all my uh, all of my uh, vlog files is now full. Now I've been using this drive for a long time and it's actually also my primary backup drive. Uh, so basically, you know, anytime Jordan needs something, you know, I've got basic backups of like every computer I've ever had on that thing. Well, that drive has been going, has been my workhorse for many, many years now. And I'm getting concerned the fact that it's getting a little old. And since I've filled it up with the vlog stuff, I actually think I'm going to go buy two, two new hard drives today. One of them is going to be the backup drive, the primary backup, and the other one's going to be the vlog drive. And hopefully that will uh, present, prevent me from having to run into this issue again for a while. So I got to go to Best Buy. Not really a fan of that place, but you know what? That's the best option right now. Oh, and I discovered I have another issue too. If I'm going to get two new hard drives, I'm going to need to get another USB hub. This this is a USB hub right here, and what it allows you to do is you can plug into one 
USB port on your computer and you can turn it into in this case up to seven USB ports now that's one of the nice things about uh, USB is there are all sorts of channels so you can have lots and lots and lots of it I think I think the number goes up to 128 might even go higher than that where you could have actually 128 separate USB ports so I think I'm gonna go try and buy another hub while I'm up there and uh, then we'll be ready to go I think all right, so I got halfway to uh, Best Buy and I got a telephone call from Home Depot telling me that they were going to deliver my uh, lawnmower and it would be at my house in about 15 minutes. So I turned around, came back home. We're going to collect that. It should be here any minute and uh, then we'll go back to Best Buy. All right, it's here. It's in one piece and it's all wet. So yeah, that's my bad boy here. I just had him wheel it into the garage right now. Uh, until we figure out exactly, you know, I, I got to figure out how to operate this thing right now. We just, he just, he didn't even ride it in here. He just pushed it in. So, uh, you know, I got to read the, read the instructions, but I got a manual and uh, I got everything I need. And as I was wiping it down a little bit, I've noticed they haven't even hooked up the battery yet. So we'll have to do that, but that isn't too terrible of a job. I don't know if it has fuel in it either. I'll have to figure that out too. Home Depot comes through again. Well, I gotta admit, that was probably my best experience that I've ever had at a Best Buy. Um, problem I have with Best Buy, one, they don't really have a huge selection of stuff. They got one or two of everything, and you just have to hope that the one or two things that they have is what you need. Now, in this case, um, I found a couple of uh, Western Digital 8 terabyte hard drives, USB hard drives. So. I got those, uh, I was actually looking just to get a couple of five terabyte drives, but the eight terabytes were just $20 more each. So that was definitely worth the time on that. And I got another uh, USB hub. So that'll allow me to increase the number of devices I can plug into it. Um, but one of the main things I really don't like about Best Buy is since the employees are all on commission, they uh, kind of, I always get the feeling that they're looking at me as their next meal when I walk in there. You can't get them to leave you alone. You know, they're just constantly in your face. Can I help you with this? Can I help you find something? Yeah, if there's one positive angle to this whole coronavirus thing, it seems to have broken Best Buy of that habit. All right, so the first thing I think I want to do is kind of just read the manual on this. I've never owned a riding mower before. I think I could probably figure everything out, but better to... Uh, you know read the manual first so at least I know what they say should happen all right so I've gotten through the manual pretty much uh, I think the next step is to do an operational check I've already connected up the battery but it didn't come with gas in the tank so I'm gonna have to go buy some gas so let's do that and we'll move on all right so we got gas in this thing I've gone through the manual I think I'm pretty much ready to try this out so let's give this bad boy a startup see what happens Well, that seems to be a successful test. 
so there's like a million safety interlocks on this thing and so that's why it took me a second to get a go in there but yeah seems to work now the thing's got headlights on it but I'm not sure where the switch is to turn on the headlights so I gotta look for that thing but uh, other than that yeah well, I think we've had our first successful test um, I think I'm going to move it over into the uh, storage shed right now because that's kind of what needs to happen next because I think I'm going to probably just uh, spend a lot of the rest of the day uh, editing some videos. i got about three of them now that I need to edit and uh, I go back to work tomorrow. So like I said, I'm not sure what this next week is going to be. I think, I think I'm working uh, Thursday and Friday this week and then I get the weekend off and then we're going into like maintenance cycle next week. So... Uh, we'll see how that works out over the next few days. I'll, I'll actually have a better idea probably after I go back to work tomorrow what actually is going on there. But other than that, I think that's all that I have for tonight. So thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night. All right, so I got a little bit of an adjustment I got to make here because uh, coming up this ramp here into the uh, shed, there's actually a little bit of a step here and I'm actually bottoming out on a deck uh, when I come across that. I don't think that's going to be terribly difficult. I think I can uh, probably either raise up this ramp a little bit or maybe just, you know, put something under it that will uh, allow me to drive up on top of that. But as you can see, it clearly fits in here really well. So I think we're good to go.